Hi, I'm Indy Nidell, and this is Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer all your questions about the First World War. Kartoffel Salad writes, Fantastic show, love it. Oh, thank you, tater salad. Um, as a sporting shooter, I've often wondered about hearing protection. Did soldiers have any hearing protection provided at all, or did they improvise it themselves? I can imagine in a time no man-to-man -man radio comms like today, it would have been necessary to hear your officer in charge shouting orders. Did a potential lack of hearing protection then lead to lots of cases of soldiers returning home or being removed from the front line due to deafness? Hearing protection was never really provided for any troops. The best form of protection then was to cover your ears in the event of an artillery barrage. The noise would have been absolutely deafening, shown by the fact that the noise from the Western Front could be heard as far away as Eastern England if the wind was blowing in the right direction. Um, as a result, many veterans suffered from chronic hearing loss. In France, after the war, between 10 and 20 percent of those who had served could apply for pensions regarding their hearing disabilities, though many of those who complained of hearing problems in the British Army were dismissed as exaggerating. But such intensity of sound had never been experienced before, so commanders had never considered how modern war could affect hearing. Um, Earplugs would have been potentially dangerous for soldiers at the front since well, yeah, they, they might not have been able to hear important orders or commands. Earplugs were only really distributed for those working in artillery in the Second World War. Daniel Bruhn writes, How was sanitation in the trenches? Did the soldiers uh, have special places that they went to pee, or did they just do it wherever they felt like? The latrines would be located as far away from the areas in which men fought and lived as possible in order to prevent disease like, like dysentery from spreading. Um, some of these latrines came in the form of buckets that would be filled up and then later emptied by an unfortunate orderly. Uh, many more latrines were even more basic than this, usually a hole in the ground that would be covered up when not in use. Indiscriminate urination was strictly forbidden as hundreds or thousands of men living in cramped conditions was an easy breeding ground for disease. Uh, also, uh, soldiers would often urinate in a tin and just throw it out into no man's land. Uh, Emre Sipahi writes, Hello Indian crew, hope you guys are doing well. We are doing well. Yep. Uh, I just read All Quiet on the Western Front and I realized how much cigarettes meant to soldiers in the war. They were using it as a currency. Can you tell us the importance of cigarettes for soldiers on all sides? You guys are the best. Say my hi to Snake. Hi Snake. Snake's over there. Hello. Okay, cool. Uh, smoking was an important part of life in the trenches, yes. It was seen as a sign of masculinity before people knew about the harmful side effects. It also provided a welcome distraction for both the boredom and the terror of the war. Uh, most men smoked pipes at the beginning of the war, and soldiers usually received loose tobacco. Uh, those cigarettes did exist, of course, they were not as popular. Um, and pipes needed to be cleaned and maintained, which gave the soldiers something to do in the long hours of boredom, or it allowed them to focus on something else as the battle raged around them to calm their nerves. Pipes in the German army were often decorated with the insignia of the regiment of, its of the owner, so they also had a symbolic role. Cigarettes, however, became increasingly popular as the war dragged on, since it was much harder to keep loose tobacco dry in the flooded trenches. Pipes also have to constantly be relit, which is dangerous at night, when snipers are on the lookout for flashes of light. And money wasn't really useful in the trenches, so yes, yeah, cigarettes were often used as a form of currency, particularly in the British Army. Two cigarettes, for example, could buy you a haircut. Soldiers were issued with cigarettes, but families would often send extra packets in their parcels from home. Smoking also became a popular habit for women for the first time, as in previous generations, smoking had been seen as, you know, unladylike by men. However, with the industrial recruitment of women during the war, they had more say in how they ran their own lives and quickly started to take up smoking as well. 
There were a lot of other changes in the role of women during the First World War, and we did a special episode about that. You can check it out right here. Do not forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. See you next time.